let's start first with global investors. And I want to turn to what I feel was the time that turned out to be the turning point, which was the retrospective amendment, followed by GAR, which of course we retracted. The retrospective amendment, we did that. We were criticized by pretty much every global investor. We came back and we said, we will sort this out, and we know what's happening. You know, there are negotiations going on. Is that something that came up repeatedly when you say, and someone as optimistic as you, if I know you well, to feel embarrassed is saying a lot, Mr. Luthra. Was it the taxation issue? And we continue to see these transfer pricing, tax demands being slapped. We've had the Supreme Court say that, go easy, you know, conduct yourself in a proper manner. We've had standing committees of parliament castigating the tax authorities. Is, are these, would you say, the two big pillars which saw the turning point as far as global investors are concerned? We'll come to the domestic concerns. Yes. Uh, if you look at the history of liberalization in India right from 91 and you try to uh, make a graph, you will see that almost every political formation in this country has been in power directly or indirectly for all these years. And we've had almost as many prime ministers as years uh, uh, that have gone by or maybe a little bit less. But you will see the graph is either upwards or at best for a few years flat, but never downwards till three years ago. That downward trend that started, I think uh, I was trying to figure out why. Why did the income tax department suddenly get so charged up? Here's my analysis. Uh, I won't say that people in the tax department, my own sister actually was part of the revenue service. Uh, and uh, so I know a lot of people, my uncles were, etc. I know a lot of people in the revenue service, brilliant human beings, but not the extra brilliant ones, not the IITNs, not uh, doctors, uh, proper medical doctors, who've now tended to join the MBAs from uh, IIM Ahmedabad, are now members of the Indian Revenue Service. So they have, you know, they, they think a little outside the box too, and they try and create things. That was one aspect. Coupled with that, the department, in their wisdom, decide to send out letters to all the commissioners, that's the chairman of the Central Board of Direct Taxes, that you, my friend, will collect so many thousand. You did 400 crores, for example, last year. This year, you have to collect 450 crores. And this is non-negotiable. Apparently, that's what the letter said. And that's what I was told. Now, to me, an income tax commissioner who's an assessing commissioner is actually like a judge. It's like a chief justice of a court telling his brother judges that you will give 15 hangings this year. You will give 25 hangings uh, this year because you're in a, you know, you, you, your jurisdiction belongs to a shady. I mean, this is ridiculous. You can say you will do 5,000 cases this year. Now, what is the outcome of that? That should be as per law. That then coupled with this, this whole sort of push to collect revenue at all costs has created this whole negative environment where people are coming totally things outside the box, brilliant in some ways. I won't say they weren't brilliant. This Vodafone case, for example, it was a technically easily solvable case. But look what it did. Just because one stupid uh, form hadn't been filed before, uh, the department took value of that and built it. Look, I, I, was, I read somewhere else in the papers the other day that 94% of the total taxes due in this country are owed by 12 people. Mm. Now, that makes no sense to me. So for that 6%, if you're going to go after uh, and create such a negative sort of, uh, well, it's not, it, it just doesn't work. 